G'day everyone and welcome to New Tech. If you've been following my past video on the build of my ultimate CNC table, in this video today I'm going to be focusing on the electronics for the control center. So stay tuned and let's get started. So as I've said in my previous video, I really wasn't happy with the current CNC table that I had created and it was an absolute jungle of a mess. And so here is an example of one of the buttons that I created. This is the spindle button. Now I wanted these backlit with an LED behind. However, I was just worried about the light getting through the, the 3D print. So I came up with this idea that I'd use channels using a, a, a type of infill that would be directly upwards and that, that should have projected the light through. And as you can see here, this came out so well and I'm so impressed with this result. One of the issues using 3D printed parts was that there's lots of gaps and bumps at the top of uh, a lot of the parts and so that would certainly attract a lot of dirt and grime over time. So I decided to create a layer of epoxy resin over the top of the buttons and this came out phenomenally. Uh, as you can see here that there was a really nice finish on all the buttons and uh, I couldn't be happier with this result. You might be familiar with Tinkercad because of the fantastic 3D modeling program that it comes with, but here you can see that I'm using the circuits tab to do my prototyping uh, for the control center of my CNC machine. You're welcome to pause it here and check out what I've done and, and the basics of how I've laid this out. So I didn't intend this video to be a tutorial for the electronics of the machine. However, I have decided to share a lot of the time lapses uh, with creating the electronics for the control center. So guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy the upcoming time lapse montage.
hope you've enjoyed those time lapses and I am absolutely stoked with this final outcome and I'm sure that you can agree. And I really like how the light comes through that frame and makes it look like tiny bubbles around the buttons. So moving on to the front of the machine, I decided that I wanted some type of LEDs to be shown through the front and you can see that I'm um, soldering up some uh, WS2812 LED strips. Now uh, this has come in really handy for creating animations for the light uh, show at the front of the machine and I've used the same technique as printing the buttons for the front here where I'm using 3D printed parts that will help displace the light. Um, you can see that they inserted really easily in, in different sections and I've also added some uh, LED diffusers down the front of the panel as well. So I initially intended these uh, lights at the front here to be some type of functional light. That means that they could be a visual representation of something that was happening with the machine. So for example, how full my dustbin or dust collector was um, or some other type of function of the machine. And then also adding a funky little button to put on the very last panel. Now this was um, added because I wanted to create some type of uh, a toggle which would be able to go through the different effects and maybe later on tell me different parts of the machine so that worked out really really well. Uh, so this next part I would uh, appreciate not judging me on the chaos of cords that I'm about to uh, show you for the control panel on the internal parts of the machine. Now as you can see this is controlled by an Arduino controlling the relays, um, however the mains electricity is something that I'm not going to be showing in this video. I linked it together and this is the final outcome. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed the build so far. Next episode, I'm gonna be swapping the table over with the old table and showing you what it can do. So don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.